Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Why am I so... <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. If you are new around here, please do click the subscribe button and join the family, join the crew. And if you are a returning subscriber, hey boo, what's going on? I missed you. Today we're going to be talking about solo holidaying. It's summer. I've got my summer wig on. The sun is shining and the world is far too big for you to stay in your city. So let us talk about traveling, specifically solo holidays. So last year, September, I took a solo trip to Budapest and I was kind of inspired by Nissi T, Sarah Destiny. I had had a few friends who had gone on holiday by themselves and I thought it was just such a cool idea. So, and I have heard about like people talking about oh solo traveling, solo destinations on Twitter. So I was like, hmm, I wanna go on a solo trip. During September, I was going through like a really dark phase. Watch a couple of my videos and you'll realize why. Um, I was going through like a really dark phase and I was like, you know what? I just need to get away and relieve my stress. And that's what I did. So I decided that I was going to go on a solo trip. And whilst I was in Budapest, I received a lot of messages basically asking me about the tips that I would give on solo traveling because so many people want to do it but they're kind of scared of being lonely, scared of traveling by themselves, don't know how to book a holiday by themselves and I said you know what why not make a video kind of just giving you the details on what I did and any advice and any tips that I would give to somebody who's thinking about solo traveling. I'm not a professional solo traveler by any means but I do like to solo travel. I did it once and I plan to do it quite a few times this year so look forward to that I may vlog it I'm not too sure let's see how that goes so without further ado let's get into the tip so when solo holidaying I would definitely segment um, my advice for you into three parts organization safety and purpose the reason why I say purpose is more so why are you going what are you trying to achieve while you're there are you trying to meet new people are you just trying to have a relaxing break we'll talk about that towards the end of this video but in terms of organization of course you are going to need to organize your trip you're going to have to decide where you want to go and when you want to go. When I think where do I want to go, I think of where will be hot around this time. I like traveling to hot destinations or warm destinations and usually continental Europe um, in terms of like Italy and further and further away from London has better weather, particularly towards the end of summer. So you may be wanting to go quite near to home you may want to go to Paris I'm from London so near to home is like going to Paris going to Scotland going to Northern Ireland going to Ireland or you may be trying to really explore and you may decide to go to the other side of the world you may want to go to Australia you may want to travel across the pond and go to the US South America you may want to go to Asia you may want to go to Africa and I believe so many more people need to tour Africa you need to decide where it is you want to go and when you are going now depending on your schedule you may be solo traveling because you have a job that allows you to travel during off-peak seasons when everyone else is I don't know working or at school and you have time off so you want to travel and you can't go with anyone um so I would definitely say check for when you want to go and maybe if you can change your time so that you can go at a cheaper time then go at a cheaper time or if you are willing to pay the price, then pay the price and just book in advance. Um, or maybe you just got it like that and you could just pay for whatever maximum price it is. But look at how expensive it is going to be for you to go to where you're trying to go to when you're trying to go there. Some countries have peak seasons and off peak seasons to fly there. Um, and definitely Google the temperature of the country when you're thinking of going there so that you can pack the right clothes, you can pack the right amenities, and it overall will just make your whole trip easier for you. Then you have to start looking at flights. In terms of looking for flights, I would definitely recommend looking at Skyscanner, Expedia, Bookings.com, and Hitlist. Hitlist is an app, this video is not sponsored by anyone, but I wish it was, but it's not. Hitlist is an app that basically tells you about cheap flights. They get their information, I believe, from Skyscanner and Expedia and Bookings.com and all these other places and Ocado and all those places so that they 
they can give you the cheapest price possible. You just have to tell them what destinations are you looking for, around what time, and they will tell you, okay, if you leave on this date till this date, this is gonna be the cheapest flight that you can get. Um, or they'll give you some push notifications that basically say like, today, if you were to fly to New York on the 26th of July and you were to come back, I don't know, on the 3rd of August, it would cost you 360 pounds. And they basically then send you to Skyscanner to book your flight. Um, but Skyscanner is a great comparative website for all the airlines that you could possibly take to your destination, as well as Expedia.com and Bookings.com where you can book your flights and compare flight prices or book your flight and your hotel together. Which moves me on to accommodation. Now, it's important to know that you're going to be in a safe area because you are going to be by yourself, a place that is easily accessible to any place that you really wanna see, and it has things around it. For example, if something is to happen to you, God forbid, but you need to be around people so that you can ask for help or get whatever assistance that you need. Being a solo traveler that is probably inexperienced and then being in a very secluded place, may not be the best idea, particularly if you plan on stepping outside of your house. So definitely make sure that you're looking for locations that are good, accessible, and safe. You can definitely Google like crime rates and statistics if, if you're meticulous like that, but if you are not, just look for places that are quite central, locations that are safe for solo travelers, and that's easily findable on google.com. In terms of where to book your accommodation, my favorite place to look for accommodation is always Airbnb. I just find that the whole experience of being in somebody's house, um, being in a place where it can be very central to the sea center, it's usually cheaper than hotels. It can offer you a bit of luxury or a, a bit of chic kind of environment, whatever you would like. Look on Airbnb. Um, I will leave my Airbnb referral link down below. Please use it if you are going to book on Airbnb because it gives me some credits and that would be super dope. But also you can book a hotel on Expedia, you can book a hotel on bookies.com, you can book a hotel. Um, sometimes for a bit cheaper on their actual website and sometimes that gives you a bit more benefits and a bit more um, security with a hotel when you book through their website versus booking through a kind of third party website like bookings.com or Expedia. However, bookings.com and Expedia are really good at getting you a comp like a site where all the information about your hotel is there, pictures of the hotel as well as how much a room is going to cost you, um, how you can upgrade your room, what is what is included in your package. And also I find that they can also help you arrange airport shuttles and like transfers from like airports or sometimes even um, shuttles to particular tourist destinations as well. So definitely check that out. And I would definitely say book your holidays in advance so that you can look at all these different websites and compare things so that you can get the best value for your money. I would always recommend also, if you are thinking about taking a trip to a particular place and you're really trying to do your research about the place, about flights, about hotels in particular, I would always recommend that you do this in your incognito tab. This was something I wasn't doing whilst I was planning my trip to Budapest and I was sitting at work one day and my colleagues were like, Courtney, I hope you're in the incognito tab or these lot are going to push cookies at you and rev up the price every time you visit these websites. So, I mean, I haven't done like an experiment to make sure that that's what they do. However, looking for flight prices and hotels in your incognito tab, could help you out quite a lot. You may also wanna plan in advance the activities that you're going to do on your holiday. Definitely Google, look at Instagram hashtags, or even on Expedia.com, I see that they now offer you a choice to see um, activities that you can pay for in advance. Look at all these things, research different tourist destinations, different restaurants, different everything that you can do whilst you're there. The more you can organize in advance, the easier it will be for you when you actually get on the ground and you know what it is you're doing and how to make the most of your days. It also gives you the opportunity to kind of plan your own itinerary, which we'll get onto a bit later. Maybe you have friends or you follow people who have visited those destinations before, just shoot them a quick message or maybe look at their location tags and see where it is they went to, where it is they're taking these amazing Instagrammable pictures. Usually they've tagged them, they've put them in their comment section or their little caption or you can just dm them and be like hey i see that like you went to this and i'm looking to go to wherever you went so could i know where this is or would you recommend anywhere for like food drinks nightlife day life um a beach whatever please could you help me um and just remember your manners when you dm people for stuff like that 
Um, but also that can be a great way to find your own itinerary and to organize in advance. Now, as well as staying in hotels and Airbnbs, if you are a solo traveler, you can also stay in hostels, you can stay with friends, you can couch surf, all of these can, I mean, apart from the friends one, hostels and couch surfing come with obviously their their dangers um, in terms of being around strangers, protecting your staff. And if it's for you, then you can definitely do it. Say if you're a backpacker or you're trying to travel from city to city at a very affordable price, hostels do work and some hostels do offer their an, a private room. There are also hostels dedicated to students who are traveling particularly around Europe. Um, and I might put like a few on the screen or in the description box so that you can check them out. If you are traveling solo for the first time, you may want to be around people who are also traveling solo or people around your age who can help you kind of get around and understand where you're coming from. Just make sure that you make your trip as easy for you as possible. Or if you're the adventurous type, you can always just turn up to a country and just be like, I'm going to find my way through that's also a challenge of your character that moves us on to safety now before you go you are going to want to well I didn't think this was necessary until it happened to me you may want to organize insurance travel insurance is a big yes from me simply because when you are away and you're in a foreign country you don't really know anybody and you're there by yourself things could happen and the chances of things happening, I don't know if they're increased or decreased for the fact that you're by yourself, but you need to know that when you are on holiday, you are not stranded. If you lose something, if you lose your money, if somebody robs you, um, if you lose something on the train, if, I don't know, your flights get canceled, if, you, like me, end up falling down the stairs in your accommodation and hurting your ankle. You may need to go to hospital or you may need to get those things replaced. You may need medication. These are all kind of the worst things and hopefully you won't need to use your travel insurance. You don't want to be stranded or you don't want to be facing some really huge medication costs or hospital fees um, or you don't want to have to come back to the UK and now sort out getting a new phone and having to pay for it by yourself, for example. So get yourself a really good travel insurance plan you can get some for as low as like one pound and you can get some like year round to cover all the holidays that you take within a year that's what i have um or you can get some that just cover the trip that you are going on you just tell them the dates that you want to be covered so go on like my money supermarket or um what's that compare the meerkat compare the meerkat compare the market they should be able to tell you the best deals for you your age where you're going and all of that information make sure you always have at least three months on your passport before you travel because you never know what's going to happen you never know with these airlines these days um just make sure when you're traveling also check if you need a visa to go to where you're traveling to you will need that to be allowed onto your flight also before you go be sure to give the number of your accommodation your airbnb host the hotel reception um your international line like whatever sim card you're going to be using whilst you're in another country be sure to give that number to your friends and your family in your home country just so that if anything they can meet you they can check up on where it is you are they can find you just to keep yourself safe and also so that they recognize if they are being called on your behalf put all your details within your passport as well you don't want to carry your passport around everywhere so maybe you can get a wallet and put a little slip in your wallet that basically basically details your name. I'm so like extra like this, but detail your name, your blood type, whether you are like extreme things. If you have asthma, if you're diabetic, put that in your wallet, just like a little note. Like my name is X, I'm diabetic, I'm, I've got asthma, um, I have epilepsy, whatever it is, just in case something happens to you whilst you're abroad so that people know that, oh, okay, this is what's kind of going on just in case you're rushed to hospital. These are extremes. And whilst these are extreme examples, which I really pray you don't encounter, I always say, prepare for the worst, just pray for the best. And you will totally be fine. I'm sure you won't be clumsy or you won't find yourself in any sort of trouble. But just in case you do, you want to know that you are covered and spending that little extra for peace of mind and security is always a thumbs up. 
Now, whilst you are out there, being safe will require you to not reveal too much information about yourself. Um, I wouldn't really tell people that you're in this country by yourself. You don't really know what's going on or where you're going. Don't reveal everywhere that you are going to be and at what time you're going to be there. Also, be careful of the area that you are living in, um, just knowing the ins and outs. Maybe ask your Airbnb host, ask your reception um, at your hotel, look at TripAdvisor and what people have had to say. Just be aware of your area. Area, be aware of your surroundings constantly and be aware of yourself whilst you are out and you're like doing your touristy things and doing your activities be aware of where your belongings are if your bags are open how easily your pockets are accessible as alert as you would be whilst you're at home be 10 times more alert when you're abroad because sometimes people can just smell foreigner on you and so you will be a prime target for things like pickpocketing. Also always have um, to hand the emergency numbers for ambulance, police, fire service, whatever, on hand so that you can get help. If you don't have like a 24 hour reception desk in your hotel, or even if you do, sometimes you cannot escape your own room, have the numbers that you need handy so that you can get any help at any time. You may also wanna learn a few words in the language of the country that you are going to, and um, whether that be Spanish, Spanish, English, French, Swahili, um, Mandarin, learn a few words just so that, learn a few words so that you can kind of understand what people are saying just a little bit, pick up on buzzwords, like if they don't use hello, well hello kind of is a bit of a universal word, but learn hello, how are you, help, learn the names of the places that you are trying to go to, Things like that will help you navigate around and also be aware of what people are saying around you and you be aware of what you're saying to people. And um, there may also be some customs of that country that you should be aware of. For example, certain clothes that you should or should not wear. Bear those things in mind when you are traveling abroad so that you don't find yourself in unnecessary trouble. So onto the fun stuff, when you solo travel, you have the freedom to do pretty much whatever you wanna do. You can wake up and just go straight back to sleep. You can decide to never step out of your house. You can decide to spend all day outside if you want to. Solo traveling allows you to be completely flexible and do what it is you want when it is you want to do it. So for some activities that you know you want to do, for example, visiting particular tourist destinations that you know I've got to go and I've got to see that, you can plan those things in advance and you can tell yourself in day one and day two I'm gonna get this this and this done also use Google Maps Google Maps is international use Google Maps to figure out how to get from one location to another you can use uber but I would always say use the public transport of wherever you are as long as it's safe use the train use the subway use trams use um, the metro use buses so that you can also get to see wherever you are and you get a feel of what life is like over there and you get to enjoy their culture a lot more. Also take time to walk to places even if it's just walking to the train station or walking to the next station if they're not too far just so that you can get a chance to see your surroundings and really absorb and experience where you are. I would always recommend also don't pack your schedule too tightly. I know there's often this race to kind of get everything and anything done. You can't see a whole city in a day unless it's like really really small. If you are trying to see the main tourist location sometimes that is easily done in a day like I know if you come to London and you want to see Buckingham Palace, Trafalgar Square, Madame Tussauds, wherever, um, the Thames, London Bridge, those things are really close to each other so you can achieve that but if you're also trying to experience I don't know the culture in Brixton and then you're also trying to experience going to Stratford and then you want to experience going to Wimbledon those things can't all be done in the same day so sometimes allow yourself enough time to kind of not pack your schedule to the max but experience the things that you want to experience but also allow yourself time to be spontaneous i think solo traveling is beautiful when there's an aspect of spontaneity for example you can go and see one tourist site and meet other tourists who tell you that they've just come from another tourist site which you didn't know about or you didn't plan to see and then you take a detour and go and see that when you kind of have a packed schedule you don't allow for stuff like that and sometimes you don't make the most of your experience also i think it's important to use any traveling particularly solo traveling when you're not like going around with friends and talking all the time and like always being social to rest taking time to sleep taking time to unwind take yourself to a spa like when I went to Budapest there were these amazing spas there that I didn't get the chance to go to but I really wish I did but I did sleep so much whilst I was in Budapest 
Take yourself to do what it is you want to do. If you are going to rest, plan your holiday around resting. If you are going there to party it up, go and party it up. Do whatever it is you want to do. Also, be social, be social, be social. Talk to people in grocery stores, talk, talk to people in the line, talk to people whilst you're at your tourist destinations. Make friends whilst you're there and meet up with them and go to lunch or go to dinner. Do things with other people that you meet out there. You may know people out there or you may have a friend who has a friend who lives in where you're going. Meet up with them, maybe spend just a few hours with them and just be really social. Solo traveling is a really good way to get out of your comfort zone and even if you are socially awkward and hey you have an awkward conversation with somebody you're never ever ever gonna bump into them again ever and sometimes the history of where you are and the culture of where you are is best told by the people who are there so even if you're talking to shopkeepers even if you're talking to your airbnb host even if you're talking to um like the receptionist things like that you can meet new people you just have to be willing to be social you have to be willing to be open to new adventures use basic year one level stranger jane jar common sense solo traveling is an amazing opportunity to get to experience new opportunities it gets to to show you different sides of your character which is really cool because you are you are relying on yourself to problem solve um to plan and also to be your own company and i think that is a beautiful thing when you learn to be content in your own company and absolutely love it whilst exploring a different part of the world and just seeing how amazing god is at creating so i really hope this video helped you out if you have solo traveled before leave like your experience down below or if you would like to solo travel maybe let me know what sort of city you're trying to go to i'm going to be solo traveling to a few places this year we pray and if you are like from there then we can link up you know we can talk or whatever so um yeah i hope this video helped you please comment please like please subscribe follow me on my socials and i will talk to you soon stay blessed and stay beautiful Mwah.